Okay. All right, guys. Voice is off. We're actually starting. Close the door, please. All right, guys. Welcome back to Latin. This is the last real week of the semester. Next week, y'all have one full day. It's Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are half days uh, where we just, and they're like smaller than our Friday short days. It's, we just teach till 12. And I'm not teaching those days, so that's the wrong word. You're just coming in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to take two finals. Hopefully the schedule has been explained to you last week, but your teachers will remind you. I should actually check right now when y'all take my final. But on when? Wednesday. Cool. I can. I think I can. I think I have it right here somewhere. Maybe. Maybe not. But um, but I have two of them. So this is first period. So yeah, y'all take it Tuesday. All right. So you're gonna do. You're gonna come in for seventh period. I mean, yeah, the seventh period exam will be on the end of the day on Monday. The, yeah, and I'm not, so I guess you'll come to me that Monday, but we'll just, I don't know, I'll probably either give you time to study for that final or, like, study for Latin, but we're not going to, like, do any, we're not going to, like, advance in the textbook at all on that Monday. And then uh, all the rest of the days, it's like, you really just have time to take your final. There is a, you, I think you go to SA between the, the first and the second final for each day. But, uh, like, almost as soon as you come to school on Tuesday, you're going to be taking this, the Latin midterm. Uh, we'll talk about the, the midterm a lot tomorrow, uh, so don't worry about it too much right now. Uh, today, I am going to introduce Chapter 10, which is a super easy chapter. It'll be a nice chapter to come back to in January. We'll finish it up then. Uh, but it's basically just an expansion of Chapter 8. It's way easier than Chapter 9. I know y'all are still getting used to Hick and Illa, but um yeah uh the tests this is the first time all semester i decided not to grade anything this weekend so i have not graded any of them they literally sat on the desk over the weekend i'm not doing that to on like on purpose to be lazy but i, I always have stuff graded by monday so i thought i would take one week and just kind of like they'll be they'll be graded by friday is what i'm trying to say uh no test this week yeah richard um, what, how much is the final work um, I think it's a lot. I don't have the number. I should try to have the number by tomorrow. But tomorrow, I'll give you guys the midterm and my, or I'm the study guide. But my midterm is basically identical to the study guide. It's just a little shorter than the study guide. The study guide shows you a lot of multiple choice you're going to need to know. And like 10 sentences I'll pick, most of which you've seen and translated before. And you'll like need to translate four of them on the, the midterm. But I'll give you 10 on the study guide. Uh, to, to kind of like master. Kylie? All of them? I don't know if that's up to admin, but sure, why not? Yeah, so it is a sizable chunk, which is good because I'll try to grade these quicker than by Friday. A lot of you guys did really bad on this test. Uh, I let you guys use the charts and the Hick and the Illa, and um, you know, it was out of four sentences, but there are plenty of Fs. Um, that, that's kind of why I stopped grading them as quickly as I was starting to, because uh, that's, that's never fun to grade a whole bunch of Fs when you gave students so many resources. But uh, this is just to say that by the end of the week, we'll know you're great on that, and that'll help inform how much you need to study for the final. All right, uh, we do have some homework due on Wednesday, but I'm going to probably give you time today to do it uh, and get it out of the way, and then Thursday and Friday will be fun days unless you need to make up this test, which we'll know by the end of the week if you do. Uh, and you can take it on one of those days pretty easily or next Monday. But yeah, this is the last real week, guys, so it's pretty cool. I know I'm looking forward to the break. I think we're all probably at the point where it's like, you feel like you really need that two weeks off and we're about to get it. We just gotta go through a little more, um, especially if we get through this week. Like I'm saying, like next week it's your, you're mostly just coming in for these big tests and then like little Christmas parties might be kind of happening in your essay or something. I don't know what this, uh, this Coleman is going to do. Are y'all Miss Coleman or Boyd? Y'all are Boyd. 
All right. Uh, what else did I have to say? Anyway, uh, so be looking for the grades to be entered by, let's say, Thursday. We'll try to have them by Thursday or, like, Wednesday night. All right, guys. What the heck is Saturnalia? Quit asking. What is yes? Yeah. Right. Uh, and there's no laws. Yeah, yeah, very good. That, that's all very accurate. And I wish we all could have heard you a little more clearly if Mad Madison Fisher hadn't been talking to her friends throughout that whole time. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, stop talking, Laura. Turn around, face forward. So yeah, everything Jake said is pretty accurate. It was celebrated usually around the 17th or on the 17th is when like Saturnalia was. But uh, throughout time, uh, it, it's either extended for like a whole week or so, um, uh, or it's, it's, it's mostly centering around this, this one day that's coming up. Uh, but I mean, the history of Rome is very long, so it changes over time. So when we talk about Saturnalia, we're kind of generalizing and talking about how it's usually celebrated. But yeah, throughout most of ancient Roman history, it was on the 17th, and it's sometimes extended. Uh, but it's based on this older festival that the Greeks celebrated, go figure you know, we're used to Romans taking things from the Greeks and kind of either reinventing them or just like, you know, using them for their own purposes. But for uh, Cronia, that was based on Cronus, which is the Greek version of Saturn, right? Cronus is in the second generation of gods after Aranos and Gaia, who are representations of heaven and earth, respectively. We have Cronus and Rhea, the Titan gods. And from them spring the Olympians, but also like a bunch of monsters are created during that time. Uh, but anyway, Cronus was known to have been the ruler of uh, like everything during what is called the Golden Age by different Greek writers. And during this time, this is it's kind of like a Garden of Eden situation where this is supposed to be when humans didn't even have to work the land for the land to produce all this like wonderful like produce and, and uh, vegetation for them to eat so no one had to work they just hung out which is actually different than garden of eden uh a lot you're about to get moved because in the garden of eden they actually did work but they like enjoyed working weirdly anyway saturn was supposed to be in charge of time uh when, when this was happening when like everything was really good this comes to an end for a variety of reasons including uh, Prometheus bringing fire to the humans who were newly created, kind of like evening the playing field between gods and humans slightly. Let's have Alora move behind Caden right now. Just go ahead and move behind Caden right now. Uh, go ahead and do that right now. And so uh, what the, this came to an end because humans kind of changed eventually. Uh, eventually Cronus is like thrown in uh, some kind of imprisonment by his own son Zeus. Uh, and then he later is supposed to flee to Italy by Caden. Um, I wish I could just uh, focus on teaching and not have to be distracted. But anyway, and then also, so we have the Silver Age that comes after the Golden Age. And Zeus has taken over. And eventually he gets really mad at people for, like, not caring about the gods. And he floods the entire planet. And this is similar to the, the flood, the deluge of the Old Testament and Judeo-Christian mythology, right? About a giant flood happening that like covers the entire like world uh the same flood shows up in the mythology and the cultures of people all over the planet it's not just people in and around the mediterranean like the greeks and the hebrews who have this idea of at one point there was this massive flood but anyway this is all just to say that i'm like kind of fascinated by that flood and how it shows up in the the mythology of so many cultures but that is like the decisive end to the golden age but greeks and then later romans are celebrating these holidays based around cronus cronia or saturn the roman version or, uh, in saturnalia uh because they're like kind kind of uh paying homage to this golden age and trying to return to that golden age so this holiday involved gift giving and merriment, which as you can see, some of these depictions are trying to show. These are the ruins of the Temple of Saturn, but the Temple of Saturn was very important. Obviously, this is a picture of the flood, by the way, and that's the golden age. This is Saturn here. Saturn was kind of, he's, he's kind of a hard god to understand in terms of like, what is he the god of? 
for the Greeks, it was more of like a harvest god, and he like maintained some of that harvest god uh, attributes uh, for the Romans. Uh, but he also was like related to time or like the succession of of power throughout time and and generational kind of inheritance. So it, he's kind of hard to peg down. But he's a lot of things basically. Um, sorry, this is a creepy picture, but uh, there is some uh, similarities here. Wait, where? We're going back. We're going back. Where did that go? I lost a slide, people. Where's my Venn diagram slide? Oh my gosh. Okay. Did y'all have a good weekend? No. Are y'all like so, so excited for Christmas break? No. Yes. 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 I'm just excited because I can do nothing the whole time. Because what, Caitlin or Ella? I'm just I'm just excited because I can do nothing the whole time. I know exactly, right? I'm really ready for that. We got like a taste of, of of free time, like a lot of free time with Thanksgiving break, but now we're about to get a big old dose. Uh, reel it back in, guys. I found my slide. What's her eye? No, I don't. Oh, that's bad. So when the bell rings, you're probably going to have to go to Miss McCall's room and get her room and come back real quickly. What's your next class? I can write you a note or something, but yeah, that's kind of bad. So if you don't mind, I think that's what you need to do with the bell rings. All right, guys. Mr. So, Calvinello, yeah? uh -huh. uh, before you start on the next slide, I wanted to tell you that um, on the winter solstice, uh, Saturn and Jupiter are going to align and be like on top of each other. Oh, weird. It's you said the world's going to explode. Oh yeah? yeah. Well, that's, that is kind of that's um that's relevant. So Ella just said that on the twenty fifth of the winter solstice, Saturn and Jupiter are going to align, which is cool because that's father and son. Um, who knows where Uranus is? Or the grandfather. They're going to fight. But then what? They're probably going to fight. Yeah, they probably are going to fight because that's what they used to do. I don't. I honestly need to look into this painting. This painting of Saturn about to chop, like he's going to chop off the wings of an angel. I guess that's. Uh, that artist's way of depicting Saturn eating all his children, but usually it doesn't involve, I mean, that's like, it looks like a biblical angel, right? I'm not, I, I, it's back here. But anyway, that's kind of a weird, that's not how we usually understand it. There's another famous series of paintings of Saturn, like, actually eating the kids, and he looks like this big, scary monster, but I wouldn't quite show those to you. I forget who they're by, some guy in the 19th century, but they're kind of horrifying. Uh, Macy? Why does he look like a I added that. Yeah, I added that's why this, this weird transparent square is uh, just a way for me to put a Santa Claus down on him. And then there was no pom pom, so I need to add the purple star. I chose purple. Yeah? Um, so, like, my teacher was kind of like, that person is like, you know, alright. Final warning from Miss Dugan. Yeah, he, well, he eats them because he, I think he hears a prophecy that one of them is going to overtake him. So he says, oh, I'll just eat them all so they can never grow up and, like, take my throne, which is what happens with Jupiter. Why, why, uh, they, why do they have to make the painting so creepy of him, like, eating the I don't totally know. I guess it's one of the more horror-inducing uh, ideas in Greek mythology, though. Even though they're gods, and I don't think we think of them as, like, fully having physical bodies, and that these are just representations of what they're like. Like, especially the Titans. I feel like the Titans are just like an idea of a god. Like, they never actually take human form, which the Olympian gods aren't supposed to take human form anyway, even though they're always represented that way. But um, I think that's just one of the, the darker seeming, I mean, there's like cannibalism there, right? Just like with the House of Atreus. Uh, that and some other stories in Greek mythology are some of the darker ones that exist, and some of the creepier ones. So it is weird that the Roman version of Christmas involves this kind of creepy god, but the celebration of him and the golden age that he presided over involves a lot of like really happy, fun stuff. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second, but it's part of why Saturday is kind of like Christmas blended with Mardi Gras, which you might not know Mardi Gras depending on where you grow up. But in the southern part of this country, at least where I'm from, Louisiana, around ooh, February, March, March, every year. Is it okay? It like changes a little bit, or it just like lasts weeks. Uh, all of New Orleans like shuts down for weeks at a time. Not really, like that's an exaggeration, but depending on where you live, you get to a point where you can't like drive anywhere because there's just parade routes everywhere. And uh, I, I love this and hate this about New Orleans, but it's kind of fun. And there's just parades for like weeks on end. 
people throwing candy at you and people like adults just like acting like they're in college again and it's just kind of like it's kind of fun i guess but anyway saturnalia is like that mixed with a winter solstice festival which do y'all know what the winter solstice like is that's like when the day is at its shortest yeah. no maddie says she she does it in a sarcastic manner uh, so yeah this is when the days are the shortest so it makes sense that people like want a reason to celebrate something they're like oh like everything like it's getting colder uh there's less sunlight we need something that keeps us going we need a reason to bust into like the harvest the, the like the autumn harvest uh uh preserves that we have of like wheat and stuff and we need to just like wild out and have like feasts one more thing from jake and then kylie uh, yeah, I just Oh yeah, like oh yeah, okay. I almost clicked on a video yesterday that was like, did you know what biblical angels are actually described to look like? And it showed like this crazy design. And you're saying like that's what is that how they're described in some biblical text? They're like a big eyeball with like smaller eyeballs on the edges of it. That's creepy. Is that it, outside of the book of Revelations? That sounds very book of Revelations, but I gotta look more into that. But yeah, that that, was, that is a very cheruby kind of cherub. Kylie? Wouldn't have what? Um, oh, that's a good question. Kylie's saying, like, if he hadn't eaten his children, maybe they wouldn't have overthrown him. Yeah, so in a way, it was like a self fulfilling prophecy for him to find out that one of his kids might challenge his throne. That created the situation in which his throne was challenged. Maybe he just would have been king of God forever, and Jupiter or Zeus would have been more like Apollo, where Apollo is just like the son of Jupiter or one of the, like the major sons of Jupiter, but he doesn't challenge his father's throne. Um, but uh, but yeah, that, I guess it didn't work out. Jupiter or Zeus ends up having a whole bunch of sons, and none of them actually challenge his throne in the way that he does to his father, Saturn or Cronus. But anyway, I just want to point this out. So Saturnalia is much older than Christmas, obviously, because ancient Greek and Roman uh, civilization is older than the ideas that are like uh, foundational to Christianity, right? All of those ideas are based on old Hebrew ideas, which some of which are older than uh, like. Uh, old Greek culture, but then it's combined with something that you know doesn't happen until the end of the before current era, when Jesus of Nazareth is actually born. Like that's when Christianity actually is like realized. And even after uh, hundreds of years of Christianity being a thing, Christmas has to take form over the, the course of centuries. It takes a long time. But anyway, so Saturnalia or Saturn, uh, it's kind of a harvest celebration in a way that Christmas kind of isn't. And it's based around this ancient Greco-Roman god, right, Danny? Uh, whereas Santa Claus is kind of a combination of this 4th century saint, St. Nicholas, who's a Greek saint. Isn't that weird? St. Nicholas is like, from somewhere in Greece. But this is like Christian Greece, really oh, yeah, Christian um, Greece. Combined with this guy, this like kind of folklore figure, Father Christmas, from England. And then that's combined with this Dutch figure, who I think the Germans knew about too, called Sinterklaas. Uh, who like he has his own weird lore, but they're all kind of combined together. And in the 19th century, Coca-Cola actually created, yeah. So Coca-Cola, like no joke, they actually created the idea of like what Santa Claus looks like in terms of like how we think of him nowadays in modern times. I think they're the ones that made him red in the first place. I don't think he was necessarily red before that. Um, and then Norman Rockwell, this is the Norman Rockwell. He's the guy who did covers for Reader's Digest way back in like the 40s and the 50s. Um, and uh, he did a lot of like every December for Reader's Digest, he would do a different Santa Claus cover. And he really kind of like molded the way we think of Santa Claus. So the way he looks now is a very recent thing. That's like that happened in the past 100 years or so. But he's based on these very old uh, folklore and or actual historical figures. Um, so in a way, uh, similar but different. There's partying, there's gift giving, which like that's a big thing that links them deeper than just like, oh, they're winter holidays. It's like, no, there's like gift giving. That's like significant. And they're winter solstice, obviously. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. What else? What else? So um, up until 217, the third century, so at this point, uh, Rome was like almost 500 years old. Their Saturnalia wasn't quite as big of a deal. It was a more minor holiday. 
But this was during the Second Punic War, the big Roman war with Carthage, and they were losing at various points, and they were kind of freaking out. So they consulted the Sibylline uh, Oracle books, which were like these ancient prophecies, like listed in, uh, in like very kind of like strange poetic language that only like religious officials were able to look at. And it, and it inspired them to make Saturnalia a bigger deal, to celebrate it in more of a Greek style, uh, and kind of uh, treat it more like the Greek chronia, which that's when it got more party-like in terms of the atmosphere. And there's a theory that part of this was because a Carthaginian god named Baal Amon uh, was um, the, the Romans looked at him and were like, oh, uh, Baal uh, Hamon? Yeah, uh, we, uh, we call him Saturn. That's Saturn. Yeah, we can tell. So if we're freaking out about these people who are potentially threatening us like militaristically, and they worship this guy who we call Saturn, then we just need to appease Saturn and throw like a huge Mardi Gras celebration for Saturn during Saturnalia, and then we'll win the Punic War, which eventually they do win the Punic War. But I'm just saying like Saturnalia was shaped by their own superstition and like willingness to try to get one over on these Carthaginians. Whoa, this is, okay, this is mostly just huge because there's a list. But gift giving was involved. It was often taken very seriously. And if you didn't give your friends or associates gifts, that was seen as like very bad, almost on a religious level. And I need a picture of it. I'll show you eventually this week. But Sigillaria were these like wax figures made specifically for Saturnalia, often given to children. But other gifts include writing tablets, dice, knuckle bones, which are bones made out of actual knuckles sometimes, uh, money boxes, combs, toothpicks, a hat, a hunting knife, an axe, various lamps, balls, perfumes, pipes, a pig, a sausage, a parrot, tables. Uh, parrots, for very rich aristocratic women, parrots or exotic birds were actually like one of the best things you could have if you were kind of like a fancy aristocratic woman. You would have like a pet parrot. and It could be gifted to you on Saturnalia. Masks, books, and pets even, so animals, statues, clothing. So the same kind of stuff, like their equivalents of what we give nowadays were the gifts that they gave. Uh, it's kind of just like the same stuff we give minus technology. Obviously, that it couldn't give someone like a PS5 or like a Roku or anything like that. Uh, yeah, Carson. Uh, very. These are people playing knuckle bones. Sorry, what? Very is spelled wrong. B E R Y and then B A R. Very serious. Yeah, it's like if something is a variable with the Y at the end. All right, what else? There's a few more things, and then we're gonna move on. Jake. I think they're just literally like nothing. And like I used to have a picture of them, and it kind of grossed me out. Uh, I can try to find it. But I, I guess they could like function like dice and that like they have sides. Yeah, it, it's weird. To, if I find the picture, you can see what it, I'm talking about. It's where it's like there's like flat sides to where it would like land a certain way. So it functions like dice. It's gross. Yeah, it is gross. Um, so, okay, that before playing dice and going along with that was gambling. Oh, I didn't do a thing about gambling. So I guess I'll just talk about it now. But gambling was something that was frowned upon. Maddie Fisher, stop talking. Um, gambling was frowned upon uh, year round, except during the week of Saturnalia. So that was the time when people could freely engage in betting on games with knuckle bones, and it wasn't really a big deal. On the 17th itself, not only were gifts exchanged on the 17th. Uh, but people would go gather outside of the Temple of Saturn and watch a sacrifice take place. Also, you can't really see it, but Saturn, the statues, his feet year-round would be bound in wool, and then symbolically, or maybe kind of on a literal level, on the 17th, they would unbound his feet so that he was, like, set loose and set free. Uh, the bindings, I think, have to do with the fact that in his mythology, he's, like, defeated by their version of Zeus, Jupiter, uh, that he's kind of like constrained on some level, but on Saturnalia, they let the guy do what he wanted to again. Um, but anyway, what else? What else? Uh, role reversal. Okay, this would change throughout the time depending on like what Roman families we're talking about. Nonetheless, like what period of the Roman Republic or Empire. But sometimes slaves would be served by their masters during Saturnalia, or the slaves would eat first, or they would all dine together. 
either way, it would vary depending, but uh, slaves enjoyed some level of like uh, the opposite of subservience during this time. They were actually treated like well. Uh, and then sometimes this was extended to children also. And then also the king of Saturnalia, which we're about to elect, was elected sometimes just like at certain parties, like just on a local level. Like it would be like, okay, we're having a party. We're a bunch of Roman aristocrats. We're going to select the king of Saturnalia. And that person can like tell us what to do. And uh, it's just kind of goofy. Uh, and then Eo Saturnalia, the last thing we'll talk about, this is what people shouted. Uh, I guess it's their version of like Merry Christmas. Eo is just like, you can say just like yo. And it just kind of means like yay, or it, it doesn't really mean anything specifically. It's kind of like whoa or yay, where it's just kind of like a, it's like a cultural kind of thing. You just kind of get the sense of what it means by being in the culture. It just means like yay. Uh, so y'all can say yo Saturnalia if you want. But okay, we need to elect an official now. I'm selecting a number in my head between one and a hundred. I have selected it, and we're about to go around just to go over this real quick. Uh, I've selected these images to inspire you, depending on who you identify with the most. That's the kind of king or queen or lord or lady of Saturnalia that you should aspire to be. By Friday, we will have five of you, and um, you can participate to any extent that you want to. If you get elected, you can just be like, yeah, I don't really care. I'm not going to like No, all my learners participate? Yes, yes. E-learners can participate as well. But what the lord may do is command us to start and stop every sentence with a specific word throughout the day. Now we might forget, we might not say it every sentence, but I'll, I'll try to honor this rule if you can think of it. You're allowed to hide Lumpy Space Princess or maybe even this little green dude around the classroom if you want at the beginning of class. So tomorrow the one we elect today will do it, whereas on Wednesday the person we elect on Tuesday will do that kind of thing. Uh, but once you're elected, you're like, you stay that way for the whole week, so it's gonna accumulate. And uh, you can create rules for the Jeopardy and the Apodnos that we play this week. Uh, or you can choose to pass your power to someone if you don't really want to be a lord or lady of Saturnalia. Uh, you may not be mean or cruel. All right, guys. I hope you have your number. You're probably going to want to write it down somewhere so you don't forget. One through 100. Everyone select their number. I already have selected mine. Because this class is so big, I figure someone will probably actually like get my number, and that'll be the Lord or Lady of Saturnalia. But if not, you need to write your number down so we can kind of compare. Can we type it in the chat? Yeah, go ahead and type in the chat. That's a good idea. And that's just so, like, in case we don't believe you or something, we can check to see what you wrote down. Because otherwise, someone could just be like, oh, I actually, the whole time I was thinking of the number you just said you chose. So, Antonio, you don't want to pick a number? Neil, you still want to pick a number? Oh, weird. Okay. So some people are uh, spoiled sports, and they're not going to play at all. But if you want to be uh, potentially elected, please write a number down. All right. Let's go around. Natalie, what you say? 50 what? Three. Okay. If someone says my number, I'll just stop there, unfortunately, and I won't go all the way around. But anyway, so 53 is our first one. Okay. 86, Nathan. 50. Okay. Not bad. Uh, Laura? What? 62. Interesting. Caden? 52. Caden? 64. Danny? 54. Kylie? 13. Soraya? 56. A lot of people in the 50 zone. Remember, as soon as people are below or above your number, your number stops mattering. You need to get close to where I am in the the one out of 100. I don't know if that made sense. Riley? Two. Two. Interesting. So she's betting that I did a really low number. Uh, Aiden? One. Okay, he's betting I did one or two. Uh, Maddie? 77. 77. Miss Fisher? 99. 99. Okay, so they're betting on uh, uh, up high. Uh, Caitlin? 65. 65. Okay, a lot of people in the 50s and the 60s. David? Doesn't know. Carson? 91. 91. Um, Macy? 94. 94. Grace? 25. 25. Interesting. Kevin? 32. 32. Interesting. Uh, Richard? 27. 27. Mm. Uh, Nelius, no? Antonio, no? 
All right, don't come to my class throughout the rest of the week, okay? Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see, um, who is it? Uh, Ella? Ella, what are you? 37. Oh my gosh! What? Ella got it, guys. What? Ella is. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> Wait. What did she say? Caitlin. Caitlin, what were you going to pick? I had 59. 59? Okay. What is She picked my number. It was 37. So it was 37. I guess I should write it down too so you guys believe me. But uh, it was 37 in my head, which, like, most of y'all weren't getting close to. Who right at the end? Grace was close and Devin were close. So you said 27? <laughs> 35. Oh, okay. So it would have been you. And then Grace, what did you say? 25. 25. So Grace and Devin were close. But then Ella just came in and grabbed it. So Ella, think of how you might want to utilize this tomorrow. You can, If you have a word you want us to use for the last 20 minutes of class, you can do that right now. You can let me know. Uh, just do whatever you want. But do you have any rules that we should follow now? Uh, nope. No? Okay. You can think about it. You can tell us on tomorrow. You can pass your power if, if you're up to it. But anyway, congratulations. You are the lady of, uh, of Saturnalia for today. And you're our first one. So four others will, will join you. That'll be fun. All right, guys. That's exciting. Miss Wanflew is our very first Lord of Misrule. Uh, EO Saturnalia, indeed. All right, guys. What I want to do for the rest of class is check in with if we uh, really understand what's going on with our textbook because A, uh, the printer wasn't really working for me this morning. B, maybe I'm glad it didn't because for the first time, we should do homework straight out of the textbook. I believe in you guys. I think we can do it. The only issue is for those of you who are like, oh, I lost my textbook years ago. I don't know where it is. There are several on top of this thing. So what I would advise to those people is probably come in here during student advisement and let's look through the Latin books up there. I think they're up there because I didn't see a name in them. And that's why they, like, otherwise I would have brought it to the person. But anyway, I'm going to assign your homework through the textbook. I might print out a few copies of this for tomorrow. But for today... It'll be in the textbook. Okay, I'm talking over like little conversations and it's really annoying, so just stop. Oh, that's yeah. yeah, but that would imply that you're like muttering to yourself, so don't do that. Um, okay, guys, so chapter 10 is all about the fourth conjugation of verbs, and that's why it's a chilled out chapter, because there's nothing weird about these fourth conjugation verbs that we haven't already dealt with. They behave the same as third conjugation. So, uh, what do y'all notice about the infinitive here? Audio, audire is a new verb that means to hear. Not to dare. Audeo, audire. Oh, it's audire. It's audio, audire. Uh, what do y'all notice about the infinitive? How does it end? Y'all might be taking notes right now. Carson? Yes, it ends in IRE. So, first conjugation verbs end in ARE. Second, in long ERE, like the Bayery, Salueri, Monary. We get both of those in first the first chapter. Whereas third and fourth and then short ERE and now a long IRE respectively. But that's not really that important. Uh, what is important is that they get the same weird future tense ending as third conjugation verbs. So they just get like I based endings and then a U based ending for the third plural for present tense and then mostly E based endings for, for future except for this really weird first singular which just like there is AM. So, what are the verbs we're going to get? Uh, what are they? Audio, to hear, like audio, right? That should be pretty easy. So, we have video, to see, like video. Audio, like audio, to hear. That should be pretty basic, Laura. Yeah. Copio is to capture or take or see. So, it kind of looks like capture. Dico is to speak. So, we finally have the word for speaking. That's good. Just like when we got scrivo, it was like, finally, we got the word for something that's so common. Uh, Fakio is kind of like ago, agora, and that it can be 700 things, but it's usually going to be something like make or do. Uh, fugio is going to be to flee, like a fugitive who's fleeing something. Video is to come, like Benevidovici, I came, I saw, I conquered. That's the Vini in question when I say Benevidovici. Uh, in video is not to find, but to, to come up. I mean, I'm sorry, not to come, but to come upon as in find. So let's always translate in Winio as fine. Uh, I might give you guys a summary for this chapter when we come back in January. 
But let's try to keep it relatively paperless this week. Since y'all are going to get a big old study guide tomorrow, I don't want to overload you. So I'm going to see if I can introduce a chapter without giving you anything, and we'll just see how that goes. Okay? Um, yeah, those dictionaries, guys. I'm going to try to get you the dictionaries this week for sure, for sure. Uh, in fact, if you want to come get one during advisement, you can do that. I apologize for not having done that already. That was a little weird. But doing it in, before January is, is yeah, it works. Oh, well, it's fine. But uh, but anyway, in the spring, I really do want to focus on actually using the textbook more. So going with that would be using the dictionaries. And then lastly, we have vivo, which is to live. Now let's look at our third conjugation verbs. Just remember those. Because if we can just remember that these new fourth conjugation verbs from chapter 10 and the third conjugation ones from chapter 8 get these weird future tense endings, uh, then our lives will be pretty straightforward. Uh, and we just got to remember, like, first and second will still get both this fit, then the fit's fun. It's just these, it's just that third and fourth, as you can see, labeled here. Get on eggs at angles at such end. But they all still get the bomb boss bot in perfect endings, and the present tense endings are, like, fine to the, yeah. Caden? Okay. Yep, guys, what does Duco mean anyway? Uh, to leave like a mother duck, not doteo. Disco is to to learn, not teach. That's dokeo. Ago is to what? Anyone? What's ago? Anyone? Ago can be seven hundred things. It can be do, ask, leave, pass, or spin. It can even be give. Did anybody in here turn in a refresher sheet on Friday? No. Okay. Because if you don't know these, you should be writing them down somewhere. You guys are really chilling out right now. It's weird. Scribo is to write. What is Garo Garo writing you on? Someone said it. Wage or carry out. Good. It feels Natalie. Trahu Trahara is to yeah, draw or drag, but not draw like this. That'd be like Pingo Pingara. It draws and like drawing something to you. And then Winko Winkara is to conquer. Good, as in Vinny Vinny Vici. Now we have all the words that Vinny Vinny Vici comes from. Vinny is from this new fourth conjugation to come. Uh, Vici is this guy right here. I conquered, conquered. And then, no, wait, it's Vinny. Vinny, Vinny first is from Video to see. And those are all perfect tense forms, which is a tense we're going to get in February. Yes? Uh, Vinny. So it's from Vidaya, which we already have, but it, it's something we haven't talked about until chapter 12, uh, called the perfect tense. So yeah, it's Vinny, which is that guy. Vinny, which is not up here, Vinny. Uh, okay, guys. And again, they all get this for their future tense ending. All right, so y'all get some of this done now if you have your textbook. If not, you're probably just going to want to sit and think about where your textbook is. I would say you could share, but let's try not to like get all close to one another and not be socially distant. But page 83, you're, this is the homework that is due on Wednesday. Y'all have 10 minutes to do it now. Yes? Uh, yeah, I, can, I will. All right, e-learning kids, it's gonna kick y'all in just a second, but we're done for the day, so hopefully Y'all have this. I will try to post it by tomorrow, though, meaning I'll, like, type it up myself or something. But that'll take me a little while. So hopefully you have the textbook and you can write this down and start on your own. Uh, good luck, guys. I won't start the meeting again because we're, like, we're just going to work on this. But anyway, have a good day. And me too. Maybe you'll be uh, Lord of Saturnalia tomorrow. You'll join Ella. But anyway. Yeah. Maybe. You never know. Uh, Nelia? Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Uh, everyone should be seated. We're not standing up. Sit back down. Go, go. Unless you're looking for your textbook. What are you doing? Guys, you're working right now. You're not. You're not. I'll give everyone their dictionary.